They do that for me every week. When I watch it. <laughs> Alice Parker is a, a real icon in the choral music world. She began as a student composer and studying music at the Juilliard School, and she met Robert Shaw, and she became uh, the person who created arrangements for the Robert Shaw Chorale when they were in the heyday of their recording projects in the 1950s and so forth. And um, she and, and Shaw did so many arrangements together that every choral singer has sung something that's by Shaw Parker or Parker Shaw. And if you mention that to someone who sung in a choir, they always know who she is because she created so much great work. Well, she started with just arranging, which is taking a song that already exists and then making it into an arrangement you can sing with a chorus. And then she gradually moved to conducting and composing and teaching composing and teaching arranging uh, and becoming a person who has lasted for decades and decades as the real center of the choral profession. Um, Alice is now 90 years old, and she's been doing this music thing for close to 70 years, um, and through longevity, but also through the true quality of what she's done, uh, she's made a huge impact. It is such a pleasure to welcome to our stage Alice Parker. <laughs> Alice has been on our campus before, and when she's come, she's done various things. But one of the things everyone wants Alice Parker to do is to do one of her famous Alice Parker Sings, uh, where she draws people into a room who are completely different from one another, and they just sing for an hour or an hour and a half, and she teaches us how to sing in a way that we maximize the meaning and the beauty of what we sing. This particular visit was shaped by a member of the DuPage Chorale, an old friend of mine named Mary Mock, and Mary is also a friend of Alice's. And about a year ago, Mary said to me, you know, Alice is getting close to 90 years old, and if we want her to come, this is probably a good time to think about it. So I thought about it and thought, you know, there's a piece of hers I've always wanted to do. Maybe I'll schedule it for DuPage Chorale for next year. And if we do that, maybe we can get her to come. And if she comes, we want her to do other things and maximize the visit so that she does as many things as she's willing to do. We were able to share Alice's talents with church choir directors, with high school singers, with um, a congregation in Downers Grove, the Methodist Church congregation, and a few private parties, as well as the two big events here. The centerpiece of our visit, of course, is doing a, a performance of the Sermon from the Mountain by Alice Parker. She came to our Monday night rehearsal. We sang the piece. We rehearsed the piece with her. I conducted, but she had various notes and suggestions, both for the soloists and for the chorus and for me. The chorus, I think, was, as would be typical in this situation, terrified by singing for this famous composer. But it was great to get her firsthand information on the piece and why she wrote it the way she did it and why she would like us to do it a certain way. The work itself was written in response to the, uh, the death of Martin Luther King, Jr. And she was commissioned, Alice was commissioned, to write the piece, I think the day after the actual assassination. And what's really interesting about the piece is that it comes in six large movements. And each one of those movements begins with a spoken quote of Martin Luther King from one of his speeches or sermons. And uh, David Swope from our own Office of Diversity here will be doing the role, if you will, of Martin Luther King. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promise. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. It's hard to imagine anyone starting to do this at the age of 20 or even before, and then at the age of 90 still going strong. Her stamina amazes me and I think everyone else. 
In four days, she did nine events here, and there was no sign that she was slowing down by the end. So I think she does it because it gives her joy and because she recognizes she has something to give, and there's so much joy in it. I heard her say a number of times this, that weekend that, um, uh, do you feel how different the room feels after we would sing a song? So we'd sing something that was pretty, like Shenandoah, that was wistful and nostalgic and beautiful. And afterwards she'd say, do you feel how the room feels? Isn't that beautiful? I love that sound. And I think she recognizes that being able to give people the gift of changing how they feel and how the whole space feels is something really remarkable. And so when we're faced with hard times, when we're faced with joyful times, uh, understanding that the secret, the answer to a lot of those things is making music and Alice just doesn't want to be left out of the party. <laughs>